Now, of course, you would think that within a lion pride like that, if you've got a grandmother, it would kind of almost be like a, a matriarchal system. But Chris, none of these females is really the boss. Now, generally, there's a pattern where the older female will decide which way the pride gets up and moves, but that's really only a, a general rule. For the most part, there is no hierarchy within a lion pride. It's everybody is pretty much on equal footing. Every lioness does an equal amount of work. I wonder sometimes in my own mind if they have their own roles set out in terms of which which lion takes which hunting role. But I don't think that's the case actually. I think it's more that they're just very good at coordinating and it's very much circumstantial. It depends on where each lioness happens to be during that particular hunt. No, there's no dominance. There's no particular hierarchy. At the dinner table, the strongest lioness will get the best possible position, or at least the one that's got in there first and is being the most fiercely defensive over her feeding position. So really, it's, not the, it's nothing like something like a hyena clan, for example. And then bear in mind, of course, that a male lion will always be dominant over the female always stronger. Sometimes the females turn around and give them a bit of a smack, but even then they have to be careful in doing so, because male lions are just that much stronger than females. They are so, so much heavier. The nice thing about our set of cubs at the moment, although it's sad for the one lone male, but when they grow up, what it means is that our five strong Nkuhuma pride will be supplemented by five additional cubs. So provided they all survive to adulthood, which is always something that you can't take for granted, but provided they all survive, we could have an Nkuhuma pride in two years' time consisting of ten adult lionesses and who knows how many cubs. Quite an exciting thought. Awesome. And the, oh, looks like the eldest lioness with her chipped tooth. Look at that grimace. So that was a what's known as a Fleming grimace. And if she's scent testing, she's going to do it again. Oh, there we go. She looks like she's snarling. She's not snarling. What she's doing is scent testing. She's going to do it again. The urine of one of the other females. And basically, or not, basically what she's doing is by pulling that face, she's opening up a passage to a vomeral nasal organ that sits based on her palate, essentially. And by making that face, the muscles open up that passage, and she can basically taste the smell of whatever she was sniffing there, probably the urine of another lioness. And all animals do it. So white rhino do it, antelope do it, lions, leopards, and it very much gives them that amazing snarling face that she showed us there a moment ago. But she isn't snarling. It's just a way of scent testing. The organ of Jacobson, reptiles also have it. It sits again on their palate, and that's why snakes flick their tongues out and then bring them back into their mouths. Now, before our beautiful lioness was phlegm and grimacing, we were talking a little bit about the social structure of the pride, and we can see the bonds between the lionesses and the cubs. These might not even be her cubs. They could be the cubs of oh, one of the other females. That's how tight the bonds are, that the females will suckle the cubs of another lioness. However, I did mention that there was one male, and we've touched upon the fact that the Nkuhuma pride will be supplemented by a number of females, but the one male, yes, David, one male will be kicked out when he reaches sexual maturity, and it'll be quite a tough time for him because at this point, unless we get a fresh batch of cubs, that sounds like a fresh, fresh batch of muffins, like they've baked them, but if we get a fresh generation of cubs, he might have a coalition mate to join up with, but if not, he will be all on his own, just in the same way that the previous male from the Nkuhumas, the junior 
the Inkuhuma, the young Inkuhuma male, had to go off on his own and find his own way around. So around about three, give or take a few months, it's very much circumstantial, once that male lion has started reaching sexual maturity, his instincts will be to start mating with his sisters, his mother, his aunts. There's no rules barred in the lion world, and instinct is instinct. And generally to prevent that, what will happen is that the dominant male lions in the area will actually kick him out. So they will push him away, and he'll go off in search of his own territory.